Welcome back to Real Estate Team Builders. Lars Hedenborg, the founder of Real Estate B-School here. And I literally just ended um, an interview with uh, Dr. Christopher Croner, um, one of the masterminds behind salesdrive.info. They just put out the second edition uh, of a book called Never Hire a Bad Salesperson Again. And for Real Estate Team Builders, um, not that I've you know, I, I feel like I've been uh, blessed to have uh, on my my teams really good salespeople, but I will say it has never been the hiring process that has gotten me that result. I feel like I have just been at it enough and uh, just keep swinging at the bat to the point where like some of them were good. And for sure, if you're just tuning into the podcast, you need to go back one episode and and really understand what um, Dr. Croner has really dedicated his uh, his professional life to. And I, I, I mentioned, I hope he took it the right way. I think he did. Um, but I, I love guys that have gone so deep and like geeked out. And I mean that like with absolute love and respect. Um you know, geeked out on, on one thing and, and it's just to help business owners not hire bad salespeople. And I, I've said it this way before, and I want to use this, this uh, podcast um, a little bit to un unpack, you know, some of the things that I've learned uh, in my mishires to help anyone looking to hire. Again, go back one episode and listen to the real expert. Mine's more like the blood and guts good, bad, ugly uh, about, um, you know, hiring real estate salespeople. Uh, and I, I, I kind of preface this conversation. So if you haven't heard my journey, it was one of like leaving a corporate job in 2007 in, in, in Charlotte, North Carolina. Um, our market shifted dramatically, only realized it like a year into the business. But June 2007 is when our inventory shot through the roof, buyers you know, with all that was going on in the mortgage, you know, uh, meltdown and uh, all of it, uh, the market shifted and I had just gotten into real estate and I left a cozy multiple six figure corporate job. So 27 homes in my first 10 months in the business, then 44 in 2008, as the market was really just sort of unraveling uh, and then went to 58 and 118, 178. The year we did 118, I hired four salespeople. Um, I'm sure I had some mishires in there that I, I literally, I've tried to clear my mind of some of those. And then we did 178 that next year, probably another three or four. There were two years in a row where I hired four salespeople in January and none of them were left like even six months later and they were all mishires. And so here is kind of what, what have I have learned. And then we went on to 248 and 312 and 400 plus and, you know, 13 at, at the, the most amount of agents was 13, 10 of which were like highly, highly productive agents, averaging, you know, as many as 100, but, you know, 30 plus homes on average, our standard was two, two closings per month, you know, to remain on the team. So we did figure some things out, even though we made a lot of mistakes. And I, I like to, to, to kind of the backdrop to the conversation uh, is uh, the difference between patterns and potential. And there's actually a really, uh, this clicked for me uh, in a, a sermon that, uh, from my pastor, Pastor Stephen Furtick of Elevation Church. If you go to YouTube and you type in Stephen Furtick, uh, it's F-U-R-T-I-C-K, relationship advice. I don't really care if you share my faith. It is straight up business training. Has nothing to do with business, but I was sitting in church live um, in, in, this, uh, in this sermon, and the pastor goes on to say, the, the name of the, the sermon series was The Power of Potential, um, but then he was talking about like relationship advice. He's like, ladies, you know, you, you all want to see the potential in, in a, a, you know, someone to marry, um, and they have all the patterns of someone that you do not want to go anywhere near. They're like, they're 32 years old. They're, they live with their mom. They, you know, they have like gobs and gobs, a hundred thousand in junk consumer debt. They're addicted to porn. They're 40 pounds overweight. And, 
you know, you want to just see that this, this has some potential when all of the patterns of, of this person pre getting into a relationship with them would indicate like red lights and bells ringing, like you need to run the other way because this is a person who has not demonstrated a, a pattern of, you know, being a worthy mate, you know, like all of a sudden you're going to come into their life and you're going to, you're going to get them on the right path. And you see like, oh, this guy can be so good. And as I was listening to my pastor preach this message, I was like, it clicked. It clicked where all the mistakes I've made with, with people in my business in terms of hiring and letting people into my world. It's because I probably wasn't as deliberate as I should have been in the, in the interview process. And even though we had a system in place, I really didn't follow it. I'm not the best interviewer because I naturally am optimistic and I want to see the potential in someone versus their pattern. So rather than, or here's what I would do in an interview, I would say, okay, so the position is, is this and looks like your background is this. And I would ultimately sell them the vision of the company and how they could fit in. And they would say, yeah, that's great. I could totally do that. I could crush that position. It's going to be great. And, you know, we would just talk about the potential in the future and how they'd move forward and how their background fits a little bit. They seem nice. I could get along with them and, and off we go. Really not great, but I imagine most business owners hire this way. And the flip side is that, uh, of that is that you look for the patterns. And this is what Dr. Corona was saying. And, and, and the sales drive assessment is uh, the only assessment that I know that measures this part, but it's their actual patterns. You know, so if I need someone that's going to be accountable and you know, bring a positive attitude to work and, you know, they embrace um, their discipline, they, they hustle, they work hard. There's actual questions I can, I can ask them. And there's actual things that they could have done or couldn't have done to this moment in time where I'm interviewing them versus like, okay, so, you know, Lars, this is me interviewing someone, Lars, you know, share with me, you know, a, a, a time where you've had to work really hard to achieve something. You know, because one of our core values, our hiring process starts with core values. One of our core values is that, um, you know, we hustle and work hard. So um, give me examples of where you like totally grinded and, and just did whatever was necessary to achieve a goal. And they're like, they think about it. And then give me another example. Give me another example. So you're actually looking for patterns that give support to the things that you need the person to do. And on, when they show up to work, if they're lazy, they generally haven't achieved anything. They don't, they're um, not competitive. They're not, um, they didn't like work us, work two jobs in college and, and play a varsity sport. Like there's patterns you can look for and we need to avoid the, the looking for potential in, in people. And there's a few other things that I, I want to cover here as I wind this sort of rant down about my mishaps in, in, in hiring. Um, there are certain things, and I actually created a list of like the, the things that we know, um, like we're looking for, for, uh, for in someone like, um, I made the mistake of hiring, uh, agents on my team that they, their income was the second income of the household. Like they didn't actually need to make money. And so that, that never has worked out for me. You know, someone, I need them to come in and do the work necessary, you know, the actual work of a, of a, of a salesperson and time block and make calls and track numbers and like the predictable part of building a business. If you have someone that like their, their spouse is out making multiple six figures and they have insurance through them, and this is kind of a, a side gig, they're not going to do those things. And they're kind of, kind of show up, ha you know, halfway for things and, uh, they don't really need it um, necessarily. So that's one, one big thing. And then I would say for, for my business, it was, you know, someone that wants to make, you know, six figures or multiple six figures. Uh, and in my market, that's, that's really good compensation. We had a path to get agents to 150 plus of take-home money um, by their second full year on our real estate team, like an actual step-by-step -step, uh, plan. We actually have it as part of real estate B-School now. Um, uh, but 
you know, what, what is driving them, you know, to want to make money? Like, do they actually, are they motivated by making more money? You know, a lot of people are not motivated. They think they want to be in real estate and they want to join a team to take off some of the heavy lifting, but they're not actually motivated to go out and make a lot of money. You need salespeople that are financially motivated. It sort of sounds stupid saying, but so many people hire someone like from their like book club or from their church group, or like, they just seem like a nice person. They have their real estate license. They're going to be on my team. It's going to be great. And there's no structure. There's no cadence whatsoever. Um, and we're just hoping that somehow they're going to work out. Uh, we want to hire people. Another thing is that they, they have demonstrated uh, a track record of achievement. And I don't actually care what the achievements are. You, you can ask them a straight question, like what are the, you know, the, the last three major achievements you know, you've, you've um, set out to sort of knock down or uh, achieve the last three big goals that you wanted to achieve and how you went about achieving them, right? And that actually reveals if they, they actually are setting goals, if they're challenging themselves, if they're sacrificing in any way to make their life different in the future than it is today. And those are the kind of people that you want, um, you want in your business. Uh, last thing I'll share is that, you know, folks that understand real estate is not a nine to five. You know, and folks that have the ability, the capacity, um, whether through a support system or they're not attached to, you know, kids or, or spouse or, um, you know, folks that can actually work the hours of a real estate agent, evenings and weekends, right? Are you willing to put in, you know, for a couple of years, 60 hour work weeks so that you can get to a level of income that is far beyond any of your peers? You know, we'll tell that to someone who's like, you know, in their late 20s, like you have the ability to make multiple six figures here, but it's not going to come out of the gate. You need to double down for a couple of years. And in that third year, you you will earn more um, twice as much as all your friends are earning, you know, because they they if they're competitive, they want to they want to know that they're going to be earning more than their friends. So those are just a few things that I've learned in all the mishaps that I've made in hiring. Uh, if you're at the point in your journey where like you want to grow, you want to scale, but it seems like you're trading time for money. It seems like you're making all these uh, mistakes. You're not necessarily good at building systems in your business. Uh, there's a unique opportunity to partner with me personally to help grow your real estate te uh, team and also plug into different multiple uh, streams of income. Uh, go to partnerwithrebs.com. That's partnerwithrebs.com. Uh, you can see what the opportunity looks like. We can have a conversation about it. You can book directly into my calendar for a strategy session. So go to, uh, go to partnerwithrebs.com and we'll see you over there. Uh, much love, much respect. Uh, we'll see you in the next episode.